live from KSAT 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It's six o'clock on this beautiful Saturday. Good morning, Tiff. Happy to have you with us. I'm excited to be here. We got some great rain this past week. How's your yard? It is popping off. It looks <laughs> gorgeous. I, I was just, I sat outside uh, yesterday evening, had a little glass of wine. Nice. And the breeze was coming in, Sarah, and it was just, it just felt like spring, and it put me in such a good mood. Honestly, Aww. a little bit of rain, a lot of sunshine yesterday. It really will be making for a beautiful weekend this weekend. Some people, though, may need to do a little yard work. Because the grass <laughs> kind of has been growing. It's popping off. San Antonio. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, That's I, the word of the morning, popping <laughs> off. Yeah, and I, I'm, I'm going to make my husband do some yard work okay. today, I think. <laughs> All right, outside right now, we have got temperatures generally in the 50s, 54 degrees in San Antonio, 56 at Stenson, 54 Kelly, and 53 in Converse. A beautiful uh, morning for us. A little on the cool side, but pretty nice. And take a look at this weekend's forecast. Low humidity today, very pleasant. High temperature in the mid 70s, 76 degrees today. Tomorrow we are going to have some morning clouds and it will be noticeably breezy. Still a nice day with a high temperature of 74, but we'll talk a little bit more about the, that breeze coming up here in a bit. What can you expect tomorrow? And again, I think today is probably the best day to get yard work done because of that breeze tomorrow. Your forecast, including rain chances early next week, coming up in just a bit. Are you ready? Festivities for the annual Cesar Chavez March for Justice starts at 9 a.m. this morning. It's the 28th annual March for Justice here in San Antonio, and thousands are expected to come out to honor the civil rights icon. So that means there will be lots of traffic in that area. So right now on KSAT.com, RJ Marquez breaks down everything you need to know about those detours and closures. Family and friends are remembering the life of a three-year-old boy killed earlier this week. This is a glimpse into the vigil held last night at Tom Slick Park. The medical examiner confirms that Caden Krieger died from a gunshot wound to the head. Now his grandmother is trying to focus her memory on a happy, friendly little boy who loved everything Spider-Man. Caden was a very bright, smart, Beautiful baby, like he could light up a room with his smile. He, he, Caden, there was nothing you could tell him because he knew the answer. Bear County Sheriff investigators say Caden's mother shot him, then shot herself. Court records show Caden's parents were going through a divorce. The mother's family wants investigators to look further into her death. Now imagine losing everything you own in a fire and then having to start over. That's the situation for people at an apartment complex who also have disabilities and have been homeless in the past. But as Patty Santos explained, Sam Ministries is working to make sure they have the support they need. This guy came up to me, um, there's a fire in the, on the building. Donna Snow's apartment was under the unit where the fire started on March 11th. It was really bad. The smoke was really bad up there. Donna and her pets made it out along with everyone who lived in the 22 damaged units at the Hudson Apartments on Blanco. San Antonio Fire says a rooftop air conditioning unit is to blame. They have already experienced enough trauma. Um, now they have experienced the trauma of a fire. Sam Ministry CEO Nikisha Baker tells us the residents were moved to other units. They're getting emotional and spiritual support. Now these are people that are going to have to start over. They've already been traumatized by life. Th that's the most difficult um, uh, piece of um, this issue, this incident. Baker says there is no estimated cost or timeline for repairs. I lived in a shelter. The unit behind Donna was home for two years. What was it like to have your own place? It was so stuff? wonderful. It was quiet. I was, I really enjoyed it. She's currently sharing her temporary apartment with another displaced resident. I want to get back in my own place. And I want her to go back to her apartment. I, I want her to be able to do that. And, and, every, and every member of our team wants that. But the reality of how quickly that can happen um, is disappointing. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News.
I was kind of lost for words, man, just seeing all the children and how young they were and um, the amount of blood that was actually all over everybody. What was supposed to be a fun day at a zoo ended in heartbreak and pain. At least two people, including a child, are dead after a school bus crash in Bastrop. According to Texas DPS officers, 44 kids and 11 adults were on their way from a field trip when a concrete truck struck the bus. A child on that bus was killed and so was another man in another vehicle. Neighbors who saw that crash happen describe a gut-wrenching scene as they try to help. A lot of crying and screaming. Um, There's multiple shirtless men out here just because a lot of the kids had gashes and, and people were just bleeding heavily. So uh, we tried to do what we could until EMS got on scene. So out of the dozens of the people who were hurt, four were taken by helicopter to the hospital in critical condition. Investigators say the concrete dr truck veered into the bus lane, but it's not clear at this time why. In Russia, more than 60 people have been killed and over 100 injured by assailants who burst into concert hall and sprayed the crowd with gunfire. Friday's attack came just days after President Vladimir Putin was reelected. An armed individual also started at least one fire inside the music venue. The Islamic State group claimed responsibility for the attack in a statement posted on social media. The attack is the deadliest in Russia in years and came as the country's war in Ukraine dragged into a third year. Well, it's a story that's getting a lot of attention around the world. Princess Catherine of Wales revealed that she's been diagnosed with cancer. So Princess Kate says she is in the early stages of treatment and is undergoing preventative chemotherapy. This comes after the princess had an abdominal surgery in January for what doctors believed then was a non-cancerous abdominal condition. But follow-up testing after the operation revealed she had an unspecified form of cancer. She says the news came as a huge shock and that she and Prince William needed time to process it for the sake of their family and young children. In the 11th hour, the Senate has passed a funding bill that prevented a partial government shutdown. As ABC's Johnny Fernandez reports, it happened just hours after the House passed the same measure. A partial government shutdown has been avoided after the Senate passed a last-minute funding bill just past midnight. But we have just reached an agreement to complete the job of funding the government. It is good for the country that we have reached this bipartisan deal. It wasn't easy, but tonight our persistence has been worth it. This came after the House passed the $1.2 trillion government funding package early Friday with bipartisan support. But the GOP lawmakers who voted against the package say it only serves one party, the Democrats. Georgia Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene immediately after filed a motion to vacate House Speaker Mike Johnson threatening to oust a fellow Republican just months after ascending to this role. This is basically a warning and it's time for us to go through through the process, take our time and find a new Speaker of the House. The same tactic removed former Speaker Kevin McCarthy last October. The bill provides funding for defense, homeland security, labor, education, health and human services. The bill now heads to President Biden's desk. Johnny Fernandez, ABC News, New York. Time now, 608, 54 degrees. Let's take a look outside with live cam. We've had some rain this week. We've had some sunshine. Yesterday it got up to 80 degrees and it cooled off. Sarah says we're going to have a breezy weekend, maybe on Sunday. She's nodding her head yes at me. I'm not the forecaster. She is. She's going to explain when we come back. Welcome back to GMSA. Good morning. Mm. It is going to be a beautiful weekend, guys. You know, last weekend we had hit or miss rain, kind of difficult to get things done outside. This weekend's going to be good for that. Yeah, I was waiting for, I really wanted to like mow yesterday. My husband's like, mm -hmm. one more day, Sarah, because it it's still a, it's still a little wet. Yeah. Yeah, I think today's a good day to get that yard work done, especially because, you know, the oak trees have really started to let go of a lot of their leaves and a lot to do outside this weekend. At least the weather's going to cooperate. It is nice and cool out there right now. It's 54 degrees, calm winds at the moment. Winds are going to pick up tomorrow, though. Take a look at temperatures around the metro area. 46 degrees in Bernie, 47 in Comfort, 46 in Kerrville. 
52 in New Braunfels, 55 in Castroville, 48 in Rio Medina, and 53 in Las Maples. A wider view, a little warmer out to the west toward Del Rio. Good morning, Del Rio. It's 60 degrees out there and 60 in Laredo. Here's your KSAT 12 hour forecast. Mostly sunny skies throughout the day today, especially in the morning. By around noon, we're going to have a few more of those wispy thin cirrus clouds that are up higher in the atmosphere. Southeast winds at about 5 to 10 miles per hour, 76 for the high. Yesterday we got up to 84 degrees, so today we are going to be quite a bit cooler than that, but still pleasant outside. It is going to get up to the 80s, though, west and southwest of San Antonio. 82 in Del Rio, 83 Laredo, 81 in Catula. Around San Antonio area, though, mid-70s are a safe bet. 76 at the airport, 77 in New Braunfels, 75 in Seguin, 78 in Pleasanton and Floresville, 75 in Comfort, 75 in Bernie, and 75 in Gonzales. Showing you right now the future cast wind. Wind gust. So overnight tonight, this is a look at four o'clock in the morning on Sunday. Notice that up in the hill country, Lakey, Kerrville, wind gusts are going to occur up to about 35, 40 miles per hour. As we head into the morning hours tomorrow, winds will start to pick up in San Antonio. A few gusts of up to 30 miles per hour, even higher gusts across the hill country. So it's going to be a pretty breezy day tomorrow. That's why I'd pick today to do the yard work instead of tomorrow. Although that wind tomorrow is just going to be a a bit of a nuisance. It's still going to feel pretty great outside during the day for your Sunday. One thing to notice though is with the winds turning to the southeast, we are going to gradually see humidity rise so much so that by tomorrow evening it'll be noticeably muggy outside. At least through most of the weekend, we're going to have pretty pleasant low humidity, but by tomorrow night, it will be noticeably muggy and that mugginess is going to be one of the ingredients for a brief window for rain as we start next week. So let's take a look at our weather setup across Texas. It is quiet. We're kind of in the middle of two systems here. We've got a larger system working its way across uh, the southeast. This is bringing a lot of rain, even some snow to parts of New York, some flooding possible across the Atlantic coast later on today. And then off to the west, we've got another system bringing some good rain to the Pacific Northwest all the way down to San Francisco parts of California getting some rain as well. This system is going to bring us that brief window for rain on Monday morning as we look at rain chances really only a 30% uh, chance for showers and maybe a rumble of thunder early on Monday morning and we'll be talking more about that rain potential coming up in the next half hour. Otherwise other than that brief opportunity for rain on Monday it's going to be a pretty quiet week next week. Cool mornings, comfortable afternoons, very spring like in San Antonio. So more on that chance for rain on Monday and we are closing in to the total eclipse. <laughs> the total oh, you, you didn't like fully commit. To that. I thought you were going to do the full commit. You know, song. we got some coffee. We have the whole morning. We're gonna, we have the whole <laughs> Just morning. warming up. But yeah, <clears throat> stick around. We got a lot to talk about. I'm excited for that. All hands on deck that day. Absolutely. I am just praying and hoping for clear skies on that day, guys. I'm going to the parking lot at Target oh. 410 <laughs> at <laughs> Balcony Heights You'll 10. Have totality for about a minute. Right. That's all I want, you know, popcorn. Target. Once in a lifetime experience. Yeah, simple girl, simple thing. <laughs> all right, 616, 54 degrees. Thank you so much, Sarah. Coming up next, a local doctor is back in San Antonio after climbing the world's tallest mountains to raise awareness for kidney donations. Why she says donating an organ doesn't need to limit your lifestyle. And let's take a look at your lotto numbers, your pick three, one, seven, five, your fireball eight, your daily four, two, six, four, zero, fireball eight, your cash five, two, 10, 14, 18, 19. Okay, Mega Millions is almost at a billion dollars. If it has reached a billion, I'm not sure. I don't know if anyone won, it has. Did anyone win? Nope. No. Okay, no one won. Is our engineer Chris here? <laughs> no one's telling, if he's not here, then he's gone with our money. Okay. So three, eight, 31, 35, 44, Mega Ball 16, Mega Plier 3, good luck. She did it. We've been following the journey of a university health doctor who scaled Mount Kilimanjaro to show that organ donation doesn't have to limit your lifestyle. She reached the summit on World Kidney Day. Courtney Freeman got to meet up with her on her first day back to work in the lab. Was it negative? 
Oh, it's negative. Dr. Kelly Hitchman is back in her lab at University Hospital, but just days ago, she was here at the summit of Mount Kilimanjaro, the tallest freestanding mountain in the world. We were six and a half days to the summit and a day and a half back down. This is Barranco Wall. This is that 800 foot vertical. So you can't see it here, but those are like little people scaling, scaling the wall. She did it to prove a life-saving point that you can donate an organ and still live life without limits. In 2021, Hitchman donated a kidney to a complete stranger. For 14 years, she's led a team that looks for compatible transplant patients and donors. She's seen her patients suffer. It's got to be terribly frightening. Uh, and then to go on the deceased donor wait list and be told that the average wait time in the nation is five to seven years has to be unbelievably daunting. That's why this team of 13 kidney donors and one surgeon climbed Kilimanjaro for the 100,000 patients on the donor wait list. And I can say without a doubt, donating a kidney is far easier than climbing Mount Kilimanjaro. You can donate and still have a full life. Absolutely, absolutely. A full life with no additional medication, no dietary changes, no changes to your physical fitness routine, no limits. She hopes people can see donating an organ has truly brought her strength, her abilities, and her purpose to unwavering new heights. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. So I thought she'd received a a, a kidney. She donated a kidney. She's amazing, I honestly. Know. Amazing work. Congratulations. All right, it's 622 and 54 degrees. A good night's sleep. So many of us don't get that every night. Up next, 12 on your side takes a look at some of the products claiming they'll give you your eight hours every night. If you're having trouble sleeping, you're not alone. One in three of us is not getting good quality sleep. But there are a lot of products out there claiming that with just one dose, you'll be dozing all right off. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz looks into sleep supplements and drugs that promise sweet dreams. We've all been there. You have a rough night's sleep and the next day is no fun. The truth is not sleeping enough isn't just annoying. It can actually contribute to serious health problems, including diabetes, high blood pressure, weight gain, and depression. Many people turn to over-the-counter sleep drugs, but they can leave you feeling drowsy the next day. And prescription sleep meds, even the newer ones, come with additional risks. Some have also been linked to sleepwalking and other odd nighttime behaviors. So you should take the lowest dose for the shortest time possible. One option is CBD. It's shown to have mild side effects and is not addictive. Be sure it doesn't react with other medications though. If you suffer from chronic insomnia, before you turn to CBD, it's actually time to make an appointment with your physician. He or she can help you with a more proven therapy called cognitive behavioral therapy, which helps focus on behaviors that can improve your sleep. And what about melatonin? Consumer Report says it might be a good option for people who work night shifts or are jet lagged. But taking more than what your body produces can cause you to be sleepy or mentally or physically slow the next day. Start off with a low dose and never take a dose higher than 10 milligrams. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. All right, now we're a little sleepy. No, no. <laughs> 627 and 54 degrees. The Cesar Chavez March for Justice is getting ready to start in downtown San Antonio. Up next, how you can avoid or better navigate all the road closures today. Welcome back, 6.30 on this Saturday. Good morning, it is Saturday, March 23rd. Thank you, Tiffany, for being with us this morning and being so cheery. Oh, I, don't wait. I got the caffeine in, don't worry. She, I need, I need some of that, Sarah. <laughs> and, but today is a beautiful day, Sarah, yeah. to go outside and just enjoy it because these spring days, they don't last too long. They don't. Before you know it, it's going to be 100 degrees again in San Antonio. So yes, a beautiful weekend. We are counting down, though, to the total solar eclipse on April 8th. We are just 16 days away. Remember, total solar eclipse will occur uh, sometime around 1.30, near to 1.30. And only half of San Antonio is going to be in the path of totality. And let me tell you, you want to be in the path of totality. Big difference between a 99% eclipsed 
uh, solar eclipse and a total solar eclipse. So right now on KSAT.com, I made this interactive map of totality. As you can see, around San Antonio, again, only half of the city is in totality. But the further north and the further west you go, the longer you will spend in totality. So the Texas Hill Country going to be pretty busy. By the way, this map also has a search feature that you can type in an address. And I've also listed a lot of times and locations for how long totality will last. So make sure to check that out. That's on KSAT.com right now. So coming up in the forecast, we're going to be talking about a few things. First of all, I need you to know today is going to be absolutely beautiful. A A plus day, nice with low humidity, plenty of sunshine through some cirrus clouds. Tomorrow's going to be nice too, but you will notice a breeze. We'll talk a little bit about that coming up too. And then our next opportunity for rain, Monday. But don't get your hopes up for too much rainfall. Details on all of these coming up in just a bit. Sarah, Tiffany. Thank you, Sarah. Festivities for the annual Cesar Chavez March for Justice start at 9 a.m. The 28th annual March for Justice here in San Antonio. RJ Marquez shares what you need to know about the roads and closures if you plan to head downtown. Well, downtown San Antonio is being very busy on Saturday morning because of the 20th annual Cesar E. Chavez March that is taking place in the area. So starting on Saturday morning at 7 a.m., they're going to start some street closures here by the Guadalupe Cultural Arts Center. So the route goes from Guadalupe Street all the way to South Flores. It's going to go north all the way till you hit Cesar Chavez. Basically, the halfway point is that HEB, that SoFlo HEB, and then we're going to wind things down there at Hemisphere Civic Park. Again, this closure starting at 7 a.m. on Saturday. Let's show you some video of the march here from previous years and we're going to expect thousands of people out there to honor the civil rights icon Cesar E. Chavez. This of course has become one of the bigger marches across the country and especially here in the San Antonio area. So let's come back out to maps real quick because the one thing that uh, the city does want to let you know about is that there will be free via park and ride service. That's going to be at the Alamo Dome lots and that's actually going to start at 8 a.m. So you can bus to the Guadalupe Center starting at 8 a.m. and then you can get the bus back to the Alamo Dome from Civic Park, wrapping things up at around 2.30. So again, it's going to be very busy out there in this part of downtown San Antonio. Make sure that you plan accordingly. We have more information on KSAT.com. Have a good one, everybody. The San Antonio Police Department is putting a priority on officer support and well-being. The department is now the first law enforcement agency in the country to be certified for trauma-informed care, as our Avery Everett breaks down what this means and how it could change day-to-day -day operations. Every crime scene that you make uh, affects you, uh, and this accumulates, and trauma accumulates. That's why Captain Rene Gallegos wants more police officers to talk about mental health. It's okay to ask for help, um, and it's okay not being okay for a day. So to make that possible, Captain Gallego says the San Antonio Police Department is changing its culture. You need to create an atmosphere of safety, resiliency and empowerment. SAPD just became the first law enforcement agency in the country to be certified for trauma informed care. I mean, you're smiling when I say that. Well, I, I, I smile because, you know, there was a lot of work. Trauma informed care goes beyond acknowledging the need for mental health resources. It takes a proactive approach to dealing with day to day personal and professional hardships so officers don't feel alone. They're part of a community that understands and helps them. The Ecumenical Center certified SAPD after looking at its policy and trainings, and it found successes and areas that needed to improve. Our new wellness program was inspired during this uh, moment in time. This certification came at the end of a year that was stained with dozens of SAPD officers being shot and multiple high profile murder and mental health cases. And that was all just in one year. That's why the city and the community say it's so important to have more of these wellness conversations. Another officer is going to get shot or another firefighter is going to go through a tough scene and, and have to deal with some injuries. Uh, but we have to show them a positive way to kind of uh, recover from that and deal with those issues. The certificate proves SAPD is doing the extra work to support more officers. And in turn, our community gets a better officer. That means the interactions in the field are gonna be with a little bit more compassion. A conversation that's not just happening in the department, but across the city too. It's changing the culture, you're changing one step at a time. 
Metro Health also received this certificate alongside SAPD, and the city says it has a goal of getting all of its 40 plus departments certified by the end of fiscal year 2026. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Time to buy another round of lottery tickets. There was no winner in Friday night's Mega Millions jackpot worth $977 million. In case you missed it, the numbers were 3, 8, 31, 35, 44, and 16. The Mega Millions jackpot prize is now sitting at $1.1 billion. The, <laughs> the next Mega Millions drawing will be held Tuesday night. Meanwhile, the Powerball jackpot is at $750 million. That drawing is tonight. So, Sarah, you do, do you, have. Do you play with the KSAT pool? Sometimes, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the time to play now. I don't know if we won any overnight. Our guy who handles it. He's mysteriously missing this morning, so I have to get on him for that. All right, if your March Madness bracket is busted, don't feel too bad. Apparently, it's the same for everyone else. After another day of games and the men's NCAA tournament and even more upsets, the NCAA says there are no perfect brackets left on its own game. CBS or Yahoo's three people picked the first 28 games correctly in ESPN's contest. But all three got knocked out of the competition when James Madison beat Wisconsin last night. Also yesterday, Yale upset Auburn and Colorado knocked off Florida. So far, six double-digit seeds have advanced to the second round, and that's why it's called March Madness. My favorite meme going around right now on social media was like, I love it when guys who actually know stuff about basketball, they get really upset. And then you have these like little girls who don't know anything and they like pick it because of the mascot or the team's colors, which is completely what I do. And then they're ones, you know, winning. Yeah, I mean, it's a very complex board right there. Yeah. All right, time go team, down. go sports. <laughs> 638, 54 degrees. Okay, so want an easy to build compost bin that you can put in your backyard. So next in this week's Gardening with KSAT, I'll show you how to make one for just under $35, and if I can do it, anyone can. <laughs> and outside, 54, but it's gonna be a perfect day, Sarah, for that yard work you're talking about. Time to spend time outside. That's what it's all about. We have yes. the Cesar Chavez March today, and Sarah will bring you more coming up next. The soil you use in your garden is important because it adds nutrients to your plants. You can save money and help out the environment at the same time by making your own compost soil. That's right. That's why in this Gardening with Case that I teamed up with local environmental gardening business and Rainbow Gardens to show you how you can make your own garden compost bin at your house. Want an easy to build compost bin? This one was made for just under $35. Remember I talked about the importance of tossing your food waste in the city green bins and how it's better for the environment? So let's take it a step further and build our own compost bin for our garden. Today, Christy and Becca, who own a local environmental gardening consulting company along with Rainbow Gardens, are going to show us the easiest way to make your own at home. Here's what you need. Four non-painted pallets. You can get these for free at most local nurseries, including Rainbow Garden. Chicken wire, burlap sacks, staple guns, staples, wire cutters, screws, angle brackets, door hinges, a drill, and digging tools. I'm not a drill girly, but Christy is and makes it look simple. Taking these screws and angle brackets, connecting three of the pallets together. Next, cut the chicken wire and staple along all three sides. Then drill in the door hinges. Here's what makes it cute. Staple in the burlap sacks, fill with compost, and plant trailing flowers for that cottage aesthetic. Finally, dig a hole in the ground and start your compost pile. Keep your composting simple. You don't want to get caught up in the ratios of the matter. Everybody's compost is going to be different. Add your food scraps first, cover with your yard clippings or raked leaves. Depending on how often you add to it, lightly aerate it once a week to two weeks. In about six weeks, it should start looking more like dirt or actual compost. That's when you start flipping it, about every time you add to it or every couple of weeks. Becca, Christy, thank you so much. And of course, thank you, Robin, with Rainbow Gardens. Hey. That came out great. Way to go, Sarah. I did it in my own backyard, too. So if I can do it, you guys can do it. Just go to KSAT.com. We have all information getting in the weeds of like how to actually 
build your compost, what to put in and stuff like that. Love your gardening segments and today would be a great day to get some yard work done in your own gardens because it is going to be beautiful outside. Right now, temperatures are in the 50s. It's 54 degrees in San Antonio, 45 though in Bernie. It's 46 in Comfort and 46 in Kerrville, so a little chilly up in parts of the hill country. 48 in Rio Medina, 52 in New Braunfels and 51 in Pleasanton. As we head closer to dawn, there might be some areas is a patchy fog out there and this morning in Castroville we've got visibility down to about five miles but in your case that 12 hour forecast it is going to be a lovely day today we're going to be looking at temperatures climbing steadily into the mid 60s by 10 it'll be 62 by noon close to 70 and I do think we are going to have at least some areas of cirrus clouds today so those high thin wispy clouds that are made out of ice crystals that's going to create a little bit of a milky hue to the sky, but really make for pretty pleasant weather. 76 degrees for the high temperature today in San Antonio, and generally we'll all be in the mid to upper 70s. 75 in Bernie, 75 in Bulverde, Sabinal, 78 degrees, 78 in Pleasanton and Floresville. New Braunfels, you'll be at 77, Gonzalez, 75, 75 in Canyon Lake. Then our attention turns to the fact that tomorrow we are going to have Pretty gusty winds. Take a look at tomorrow's wind gusts. Wind gusts of up to 35 to even 40 miles per hour in some places, especially across the hill country. So a little bit of a nuisance for you when it comes to those temperature, those wind gusts up to 40 miles per hour, but still a pretty pleasant weekend as a whole. 76 and nice today, 74 tomorrow, just noticeably breezy with a few morning clouds. After the breezy conditions tomorrow, we are going to have a few areas of showers early on Monday morning. Let's talk about our next rain chance. As we take a look at the weather setup, it is quiet across Texas right now, but lots of rainfall for the eastern half of the United States, even some flooding across parts of the Carolinas and into Virginia possible today. But our next rain chance is all the way out in the Pacific Northwest. Take a look, Seattle, Portland, San Francisco, all getting some good rainfall today because of this low. Now, by the time the low makes it here, system's going to kind of be rained out pretty uh, extensively. So take a look at the future cast as we head into Sunday evening. A few thunder showers from Dallas all the way up to parts of uh, the hill country nearer to Junction. This could be an area of severe weather, but we are going to be on the tail end of things, unfortunately, here in San Antonio. So really what we're looking at is close to dawn, just a few passing showers, perhaps even a thunder shower. But this is all going to pretty much be right before dawn and it's going to be quick moving and out of here by definitely the mid morning hours on Monday. So it may not even affect the morning commute too much on Monday other than a few damp spots on the roads. And how much rain could we see? Well, because this is going to be a fast moving system, maybe up to a tenth of an inch of rain if you're lucky. Otherwise, it is going to be a fairly quiet week for us with cool mornings and comfortable afternoons in the 70s. Only significant chance for rain I would say would be on that Monday morning as we were talking about. More news for you after the break. Welcome back. Did the Bear County District Attorney's Office dismiss a DWI charge in exchange for a woman's testimony in an unrelated case? A defense attorney is accusing prosecutors of being untruthful about their decision to dismiss. So she also says they have not properly handed over evidence in her client's case. Case at Investigates Dylan Collier walks us through these records. In November 2017, Jarvis Anderson and his younger brother Lawrence Jackson were charged with human trafficking, accused of forcing two teenage girls into prostitution, a scheme investigators say was exposed after one of the girls fled from this Northside hotel and alerted her family, who then contacted police. We are not identifying her. Hello. While Jackson pled no contest in 2022 and was sentenced to 10 years in prison, Anderson continues to fight for his freedom. His four count indictment reduced to two counts after prosecutors refiled the charges in late 2022. His attorney, Carolyn Wintland, argued in court this month 
that San Antonio police conducted a flawed investigation and evidence should be tossed, in part because officers entered and searched the hotel room without a warrant. The day's long hearing included several heated exchanges between Wintland and visiting Judge Jefferson Moore. Is it evidence, Judge? And you, you have stop, to watch it. Stop, stop, stop talking. Look, I'm not hearing or seeing anything that's relevant. Wintland telling KSAT during a break she feels the cards have been stacked against her. Yes. Judge, it's all relevant. No, no. Take a seat then. Take a seat. I disagree. Take a seat. Wintland said the case against Anderson has been hampered by discovery issues for months, specifically that prosecutors dragged their feet on handing over their correspondence with SAPD. Records confirm the second alleged victim in this case, who we are also not identifying, was accused of driving drunk when she collided with a San Antonio Fire Department ambulance in February 2021. She was unable to recite the alphabet at the scene, at a blood alcohol content of 0.21, nearly three times the legal limit to drive a vehicle, racked up five pretrial violations for not calibrating her in-home alcohol monitoring device and for skipping tests, and was cited six weeks after the DWI crash on several charges, including marijuana possession in an unrelated incident in which she was seen by police driving the wrong way on a one-way street. Despite all of these issues, her DWI case was dismissed last March. It was always, always, always told to me by the state that there had been never any agreement with, with her cooperation, that there was nothing, nothing, nothing that we needed to be aware of, that the trafficking case where she supposedly was a victim of was not connected to the dismissal, which happened on a very bad DWI. But judicial dialogue notes obtained by KSAT following a public records request tell a different story. March 6, 2023, the same day her DWI case was dismissed, a DA staffer wrote that he spoke with CH and JG, First Assistant District Attorney Christian Henriksen and District Attorney Joe Gonzalez. Quote, we all agree that the case should be dismissed. Defendant was very helpful in a human trafficking case that resulted in prison time for that defendant an apparent reference to her cooperation in the Jackson case months earlier. The staffer also noted the arresting officer in the DWI had not seen the woman driving, could not perform standard field sobriety tests, and did not get her signature on the blood draw consent form. Wintland says the prosecution was simply not truthful. It clearly indicates that there's a connection there. The DA's office did not respond to repeated requests from us about its decision to dismiss the 2021 DWI case. At last check, Judge Moore had not ruled on Wintland's motion to suppress evidence. Her client is scheduled to be back in court on Friday. For KSAT Investigates, I'm Dylan Collier. 655, 54 degrees. Let's take a look outside with Transcom. Still early at 655 and not a lot of people on the roads this morning, but it's going to be a busy Saturday, especially in the downtown area at 9 a.m. with that Cesar Chavez March kicking off. You can see the beautiful pink rays there as the sun begins to rise. If any incidents pop up, we'll let you know about it. If you're looking to spruce up your yard, the city's Parks and Rec Department is giving away free fruit trees this weekend. It's their annual free fruit tree giveaway and it will be at Monterey Park on the west side today beginning at 8 a.m. You have to get there early because the line will be cut off after 1,000 people show up. These these fruit trees are a hot commodity. I know people do line up for them because they can people show up real quick. Yeah, because <laughs> these can be expensive. So trees will be lemon, lime, key lime, orange, peach, pomegranate and fig. Oh, the coveted fig tree. The trees are limited to one per household. Make sure you plan immediately when you do get them. Good advice, Sarah. It's 53 degrees outside right now in the 40s, though, across the hill country. So a little chill in the air, but it'll be a nice day with a high of 76. Noticeably breezy tomorrow, but still pretty pleasant. We'll be looking at wind gusts of up to 30 to 35 miles per hour for your Sunday. And then Monday, we do have some 
some rain, especially in the morning, and it'll be brief, but clearing out pretty nicely. Otherwise, a quiet week, chilly mornings, comfortable afternoons, not too warm, not too cold. Goldilocks weather this week. <laughs> 48 in the morning. Yeah, a little chilly, but I mean, it's 53 right now. So. Yeah, we can do it. Yeah, we can do it. Can't complain. That summer is calling. I'm like, I, I know. know I'll take it. Oh, my <laughs> Thank God. Thank you, Tib. Thank, Thank you, Sarah. Hey, we'll see you guys back here at 8 a.m.